All Renegades of Puck to the Trenches. It's time for Renegades of Puck TV. Welcome to the bunker. Welcome to the essence of No Half Steppin'. I'm your host and captain, Crazy Charlie Sonia, and before we get started with the No Half Step in Hockey coverage, let me direct you to RenegadesofPuck.com. Once you go to RenegadesofPuck.com, you'll learn everything you need to know about the Renegades of Puck, and once you click on that merchandise link, you'll be able to get access to our classic logo t-shirt, our pride logo t-shirt. Hell, we've got about 55 different items with our logo on it. We call them gimmicks, and we have a good time selling them. Socks, throw pillows, bed sets, wall art, it doesn't make a difference to us. We've sold out, so you can buy in. So we sure to appreciate each and every one of you for purchasing some Renegades of Puck merchandise. Social media is of critical importance to the Renegades of Puck, and we sure could use your assistance. Recruiting efforts are underway on all social media platforms. We would love it if you would subscribe on YouTube, and then let others know to subscribe to our platform on YouTube at Renegades of Puck. Once you see Renegades of Puck TV posted there, pass those links around on your Facebook feed. Listen, if Facebook is not your preferred method of using social media, then please pass those links around on Twitter or let people know on Instagram. You can find the Renegades of Puck on all of these different social media platforms. You can also find us on SoundCloud, but we will be moving the audio version of the podcast to a new platform coming right around the beginning of the NHL playoffs. Stay tuned for details on that soon. Also, our behind-the-scenes live stream Twitch. It's a great community. We're having a lot of fun, fully interactive, and I've got the opportunity to answer questions and respond to the Renegades as the show is being recorded right here on Renegades of Puck TV, and that is happening all on Twitch. If there are second takes, mistakes, or F-bombs, that's where you'll be finding them. We're having fun. It's live. It's interactive, and it is definitely a different presentation. It's not pretty. It's real broadcasting. It's happening over there on Twitch, and I sure do enjoy everyone that is helping me out with that feed. We would love it if you would become a partner of the Renegades of Puck. You can do that by going to Venmo and searching Renegades of Puck, or just scan the QR code that's currently on your screen. Any donation helps and goes a long way, and it goes directly to the Renegades of Puck. To help us build up our funds for the summer of No Half Step, and we sure could use a little bit of extra donations. You've done a great job of helping us build out the bunker throughout this season. I can't thank you enough, but we really could use a little bit more assistance. Built by Renegades for Renegades, I sure am appreciative of every single penny that you send our way. Thank you. Stick taps, love, and respect. Now I know you're here for the No Half Step in Hockey coverage, so let me deliver the goods. It's time for operation number 641 for the Renegades Puck. That's right, show number 641. And on this date in hockey history, the NHL season is heading dramatically towards its conclusion. Just a week to go, and the National Predators currently find themselves in fourth place in the Central Division after 78 games played, a record of 44, 29, and 5. 93 points has them in a playoff position at this moment in the Central Division because their next opponent is in the Central Division. We will talk about where the Nashville Purs are, but the wild card race is what is dramatically and significantly more important at this moment in time. The Preds, 93 points in fourth place, have them 12 points behind the third place St. Louis Blues and 14 points behind their next opponent, the second place Minnesota Wild. The Minnesota Wild have 170 points. They have also eclipsed 50 victories on the season now, 21 losses, 7 overtime losses, a road record of 21, 14, and 5 a goal differential impressive plus 54 the national Predators on home ice are 25 14 and 0 have a goal differential of plus 16 an overall record of 44 29 and 5 most importantly i just mentioned the wild card race so before we talk about the matchup between the preds and the wild let's talk about that wild card race for just a moment the national Predators are currently the number one wild card team in the western conference which means they would have a matchup against the pacific division winning calgary flames with 90 three points and four games remaining in the season the Dallas Stars are the second wild card team at this time they also have 93 points but they only have three games remaining on the season the number two wild card in the Western Conference will get a best of seven series in the first round against the Colorado Avalanche who currently sit at 116 points with four games to go on the season the Vegas Golden Knights are the first team on the outside trying to displace either Dallas or Nashville to get themselves into a playoff position they are four points behind with 89 and have four games remaining on the season pivotal on their schedule the Vegas Golden Knights will play the Dallas Stars on Tuesday so hopefully no three-point game there the Vancouver Canucks are still technically alive at 87 points and have 
four games remaining. So your wild card race is more important now than the Central Division race, but we did need to talk about the Central Division. The Preds wrap up the regular season on the road after this game. They will take on the Calgary Flames on home ice. One more game at home ice Tuesday, and then heading off onto the road to finish off this regular season schedule at Colorado on Thursday and at Arizona on Friday. So for the Nashville Predators, four games to go on the regular season, and right now, they do control their own destiny. Now, I talked about the Nashville Predators' next opponent, which is the Minnesota Wild. Let's take a look at the regular season series. No strangers, of course, Central Division rivals, and a whole lot of familiar faces as we go through this preview. These two teams met for the first time back on October the 24th when the Predators defeated the Minnesota Wild 5-2 to in Minnesota. It was Connor Ingram taking the victory, 33 out of 35 in that game. Roman Yossi goal on three assists for four points. Ryan Johansson chipped in with two goals. It would be all the way on the 13th of March before these two teams would meet again. It would happen in Minnesota, and the Preds would win again. 6-2 to two this time. Big save Dave got the victory 26 out of 28. Roman Yossi again a big night. Two goals and two assists for four points. Philip Forsberg also a big night. Two goals and one assist for three points. They would flip to Bridgestone Arena on the 5th of April, but the score would remain the same as the National Person would score another 6-2 to two victory over the Minnesota Wild. UC Soros this time getting the victory. 47 out of 49 in that game. Johansson gets the hat trick. Roman Yossi, another huge night. One goal and two assists for three points. So for the Nashville Predators on the season, a record of 3-0 and against the Minnesota Wild, collecting all six points that were available. And they've had three different goaltenders score victories against this Minnesota Wild team. And the captain, Roman Yossi, is having a season just against the Minnesota Wild. Four goals, seven assists for 11 points in just three games. I cannot wait to see what he is going to be able to do tomorrow at Bridgestone Arena against the Minnesota Wild in the final regular season meeting between these two teams. Now, the Minnesota Wild, you go and take a look at their most recent action, and of course, it's impressive. They have 107 points on the season, so let's just look at the most recent of five games on the 16th of April. It was a 6-5 overtime loss at St. Louis Blues, and the next night, a 5-4 overtime win versus San Jose. On the 19th, a 2 nothing victory at Montreal, a 6-3 win Versus Vancouver on the 21st and on the 22nd, a 6-3 win versus Seattle. Taking a look inside the matchup, the rankings, and the numbers between these two teams, it is, of course, the Minnesota Wild leading in goals for highly impressive number 3.72. That is fifth best in the league. The National Predators at 3.15 is 12th overall in the NHL in goals against. The Preds are actually ahead in this statistical metric. 14th overall in the NHL, giving up 2.96 per game, while Minnesota is giving up 3.04. In shots for the Preds are 23rd in the NHL, while Minnesota is 11th, generating 32.5 shots on net per game. When it comes to shots against, they're both in the teams with Minnesota at 15 and Nashville at 19. You might find this one interesting though. The Nashville Predators have the more impressive power play converting at 24.2 percent on the season that's seventh best in the nhl minnesota is at 22.3 percent which is 11th best in the nhl the penalty kill is in favor of the nashville predators neither unit very impressive the Preds penalty kill unit is rated 19th in the NHL, and they have been getting lit up as of late. 79.1% while the Minnesota Wild power penalty kill is 24th in the NHL, 20, 75.7%. Now, every NHL team has a collection of incredibly high-skilled individuals, but this season, both of these rosters are seeing highly impressive, record-breaking performances, and a lot of these names are going to seem awfully familiar to you Nashville Predators fans. Let's take a look at the Minnesota Wild updated stats as of this evening. Kaprizov has broken the 100-point mark now at 101. 45 of those are goals, 56 assists. Kevin Fiala having a career of 32 goals, 50 assists for 82 points. Zuccarello at 24 and 55 for 79. Hartman at 33 and 29 for 62. And Erickson Eck has 23 goals and 21 assists on the season for 44 points. The captain Roman Yossi leads the National Predators in scoring and now has reached 90 points on the season. 21 goals and 69 assists. Matthew Shane second on the team in scoring. 40 goals and 39 assists for 79 points. Philip Forsberg at 39 goals and 38 assists for 77 points. Ryan Johansson's got 23 goals and 36 points for 59 points. And Mikhail Granlin is at 10 goals and 45 assists for 50 five points overall. 
UC Soros in net 38-25 and 3.918 save percentage of 2.63 goals against average. Yes, the number of victories is helping the team and is still number one in the NHL, but the rest of the numbers have just absolutely sunk. To even mention the word Vezina when it comes to UC Soros at this point in the season would absolutely be just myopic and laughable. Flurry with the Minnesota Wild since the trade. 7-1-0 and 9-1-8 save percentage at 2.64 goals against average. That 7-1 one well that one happens to be against the Nashville Predators the last time these two teams played maybe that's an advantage for this Nashville Predators team maybe the fact that the Minnesota Wild are playing for nothing more than home ice advantage against the St. Louis Blues maybe they are not as motivated as they should be at this time of the year we will of course find out coming up very quickly as the Nashville Predators had to jump on a plane immediately to get back to Nashville to get on the ice to face off against the incredibly strong Minnesota Wild Club here on Bridgestone Arena ice to close out the regular season series. It's now time for the Rebirth Sports full game recap. Rebirth Sports, you can find them at rebirthsports.com. You can also find them on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Not just jersey makers, hockey tailors, and they can outfit your entire hockey operation. I encourage each and every one of you Renegades of Puck to reach out and check out their work online. Again, you can find them at rebirthsports.com. You know that I have worn Rebirth Sports threads in many different rinks and occasions all over the United States of America. Whether it is skating in league play right here in Middle Tennessee for the Mighty Drunks and winning Stanley Kegs, or if it is playing in charity events like the Wish Cup, heading off to Lake Nokomis and skating in the United States Pond Hockey Championships, or wherever it is that I might be playing hockey. Everywhere I'm skating, people are always asking, where did you get those threads? And it's the best conversation I get to have because it's all about Rebirth Sports. They're great people, they're great partners, and I sure am appreciative to have them in the trenches with the Renegades of Puck. Now, let's get to that Rebirth Sports full game recap. Let's go all the way back to April the 23rd of the year 2022 when the Nashville Purrs were in Tampa Bay to take on the Tampa Bay Lightning and John Hines deploys his lines in the following way. Cousins, Johansson and Cunning, Forsberg, Granlin and Duchesne, Trennan, Sissons and Juneau, Luff, McCarron back in the lineup and Tomasino, Yossi and Fabro, Ekholm and Carey, Borbietsky and Benning are your defensive pairings and you see Soros gets the start in net. And we are just 56 seconds into the first period and UC Soros is intercepting Kalorn's pass attempt that ends up being a shot on goal as it goes across the crease at 116 of the first period we see Forsberg off to the box two minutes four tripping Hedman picks up his 20th goal of the season it was a one-time bomb from the high slot giving the bolts a one nothing lead over the Nashville Predators at 310 of the first period Elliott comes up with a save on Luff there's a scrum after the whistle and Luff and Sergeyev are off to the box two minutes each 511 of the first period UC Soros comes up with a save on point off of the rush at 620 Maroons off to the box two minutes four elbowing. Elliott comes up with a huge save on Carrier from the slot area, then another save on Tanner Janot, and then another save with some scramble and some jam before the end of this PK. 10-59 in the first period. Sorelli's got a 17th of the season, giving Tampa Bay a 2 to nothing lead in the first period. He got behind the D, and this was an easy score as he was set up from the pass from the neutral zone. Tampa Bay, again, leads 2 to nothing. At 11-19 of the first period, Tomasino hits the post from the sharp angle at 12-58. Kucherov and Cousins are off to the box. Two minutes each for some stick work. We see a four-on-four four scenario that would come and go. And at 15-56 foot, would go off to the box. Two minutes for interference. The captain, Roman Yossi, would score his 21st goal of the season. It was a wrist shot from the high slot. Plenty of time to pick his spot, and he certainly did as the Nashville Predators are on the board. Tampa Bay, though, still leading 2-1 to one at 18 14 of the first period. Janot's off the box. Two minutes for cross-checking. Soft call or not, they've been enforcing that particular rule all season long. So Jano goes and sits, but he would not have to sit for very long. Saros would come up with a save on Kucherov and then would smother the rebound as Kalorn was getting cleared very hard from the crease area. But then Kucherov would score his 21st goal of the season. It would be a wrist shot through traffic. A excellent shot putting the Tampa Bay Lightning up. 3-1 to one here at the end of the first period. Tampa Bay also outshoots Nashville in the first period. 13-8. to eight. 133 into the second period on the clean sheet. Elliott's coming up with a save on Trennan at close range. It's 601. Maroons off to the box. Two minutes for hooking. Elliott comes up with a save on Granlin at close range. At 845, Maroons going immediately back to the box. This time it's two minutes for slashing. Elliott would come up with a save on Duchesne's one timer. Then Soros would have to come up with a huge shorthanded save on Hagel's partial breakaway. And then another save after Forsberg turned the puck over while he seemingly took his eye off of the four checker while he was 
behind the net. This leads to a second shot on goal and a second great scoring opportunity that UC Soros has to stop. Carrier would, though, put the Nashville Predators back on the board with a power play goal. His third goal of the season, putting the Preds, giving them the second goal of the game now, down 3-2 to two to Tampa Bay. It was Tomasino with a perfect no-look cross-crease pass to the back post. As a matter of fact, not a single defender looked over to see where Carrier was. They were all eyes on Tomasino the whole way. Incredible otherworldly distribution right here by Phil Tomasino. 13.58 of the second period. Stamkos is 35th goal of the season gives Tampa Bay a 4-2 to lead. It was a sharp angle one-timer after the turnover and it's amazing to watch Tampa Bay out there competing for every puck everywhere. It doesn't matter what the score is. It doesn't matter how small the play is in the game. Tampa Bay is always competing. As a matter of fact, they're quite fun to watch if you're not cheering for the opponent, that is. Tampa Bay is out shooting the National Predators after two periods, 24-18. to 18. We roll over to the third period, and we're 134. Once UC Saros comes up with a save on Palats, redirect at the back post, plus another rebound opportunity at 137. Though Colton has his 22nd goal of the season. It was a deflection in the slot area of Hedman's long shot after Tampa Bay sets it up expertly with a solid faceoff win. Tampa Bay is now up 5-2. to two. At 2.08 of the third period, Maroon's got his 11th goal of the season. It was a lazy, lazy turnover by the Preds, leading to another easy goal. UC Soros is out at this point, and big, Dave, big save Dave Riddick is in at this point. We see a score of 6-2 to two in favor of Tampa Bay. At 6.39, Elliott comes up with a save on Ekholm. He was in alone on the 2-on-0, but could not make the decision fast enough and ultimately comes away with nothing. We see Rudin and Cousins go off the box five minutes each at 7.24, and at 14.39, Dave Riddick comes up with a huge save on Stamkos, and that takes us to the conclusion of this game, thankfully, with the final score being 6-2 to two in favor of the Tampa Bay Lightning. Tampa Bay would outshoot Nashville 39-21, to 21, so the Nashville Purs would only generate three shots on goal in the third period in Tampa Bay. This was not the magical scenario of last year when the Nashville Purs closed out their last trip to Tampa Bay. This is quite different. The Nashville Predators are floundering at the most inopportune moment of the season. Still well in control of their destiny, easy enough to get up off the mat and start going in the right direction again. But right now, I see a Nashville Predators team that is lacking the identity that was talked about for the first 80% of this season. Hopefully the Nashville Predators can turn things around and get their heads straight very quickly. A very good Minnesota Wild team is going to be in Nashville tomorrow waiting for them. UC Saros was 24 out of 30 in this game, and we have seen a number of times in recent play where UC Saros has given up an otherworldly amount of goals for a goaltender that was for at least half of the season in discussion as a Vezina finalist. That is certainly not the case anymore. You've got to ask the question. He has not been a starter for very long in this league. Is he officially overworked? Is he tired? And... Is he about to start another back-to-back -back game? This would be insane. But is John Hines about to turn around and put UC Saros back out on the ice again against the Minnesota Wild? Now, I've been highly critical of this before. I've referred to it as coaching malpractice. I hope that's not something we're going to be discussing. Big Save Dave should get the start. He has a victory against this Minnesota Wild team already this season. And UC Saros right now needs to get some rest in time for the playoffs. A lot of hockey packed into a short amount of time and then a best of seven coming up in the first round. UC Saros does not need to be playing on Sunday. Mosh is off tonight, so we'll go ahead and move on and talk about Strong Style Fitness. Strong Style Fitness is an incredible partner here to the Renegades of Puck. We would appreciate if you would reach out and check out strongstylefit.com or on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. 150 workouts by a certified personal trainer, all on demand and totally donation-based. That's right, Renegades of Puck. A certified personal trainer is ready to train you and ready to help you do that completely for free. So please, I've seen the results, I've experienced the results, and I know that you will too. Get up off the couch and get yourself moving, get yourself motivated. A happy renegade and a healthy renegade are the same exact thing, and Tracy over at Strong Style Fit is going to help each and every one of you get there. Trust me, I know. Just give it a try. All right, let's move on and talk about Roman Yossi getting his 90th point of the season. He's the first D-man in 30 years to reach the 90-point mark. It would have been incredible to see him reach 100 points, but unless something absolutely insane happens here over the final 
four games of the season. I highly doubt Roman Yossi is going to reach 100 points, but he has reached 90 points. He has broken the single-season points record for the National Predators in their franchise history, and it's been highly impressive to watch all season long. He's had a great season against the Minnesota Wild. Who knows what he is going to do in this game on Sunday. We'll be here to cover it and break it down, of course. And i got to ask at this point, where was the offense? Where is Ellie Tolmanen? Where is the identity? Where's the jam? Where's the sandpaper? Where's the grit? Why, with four games to go in the season, do I have so many questions about a team that still controls its own destiny and still has every opportunity to have the two versus seven, essentially? Yes, I'm still stuck on the old conference seedings matchup, but essentially to get the chance to play the division winner that they would prefer to play. So the Preds have a lot going for them, yet all I have going is questions. Sean C. Smith also has plenty of questions. So I'm going to let Sean C. Smith take over right now, give you his analysis, and then I'll come back, respond, and give you a little bit more of my analysis. He is from onthefourcheck.com. You can find him online on Twitter at SCSOTF. You can watch him right here on Renegades of Puck TV. He's the one and only Sean C. Smith. Thanks, Charlie. Hey, Renegades, Sean C. Smith. And I, I want to keep it brief tonight because I am under attack by pollen. It's giving me horrific coughing fits, and I would really like to get out of the day unscathed by another one. So I want to keep it brief and only talk about two things. And the first thing I want to do is eat a little bit of crow. And I'm going to tell you why. And it's probably not going to taste very good going down, but neither did this loss of the Tampa Bay Lightning. So let's say this. I spent a lot of time this past week talking on five, five different Predators related radio broadcast, YouTube channels, podcasts, what have you, talking about what I like to call the, the TGT line, what some people are calling the youth line, what, whatever you want to call it. It's, of course, Philip Tomasino, Ellie Tolvanen, and Cody Glass. Now, what's interesting is what was I saying on those five shows? I was saying that I really liked the way they looked, that they put up a lot of good offensive effort, and they were playing a strong defensive game too, and that I would love to see them, and I expected them to be a big part of this team moving forward. I thought McCarron was supposed to come back already, and they'd kind of wave that off to say, hey, let's let this, this line stay together. And then, almost as soon as I finished my last show, which was the uh, Locked On Predators podcast with, uh, with Nick S. Morgan, um, they sent Cody Glass back to... Uh, to Milwaukee. And if that wasn't bad enough, I found out today that they healthy scratched Ellie Tolvin. Meaning that of those three guys that I thought looked so good, they only went with one of them. And they, they went with Philip Tomasino. And I'm not going to complain about Philip Tomasino getting playing time. I think he played a great game tonight. Um, but the reality is, just because I think something looks good, just because you think something looks good, you know, the coaches, they're not always looking at the same things we're looking at. So I don't know if they're gearing up for a, a much more physical playoff situation than we're imagining, or they just really didn't think that that was ready uh, to come out of the oven and be, be what they needed it to be moving forward. So um, here's, here's to hoping that next season we see that line reunited, or maybe even a little bit later this season. But I definitely liked the life that I saw out of that group. And um, again, can't say anything negative about Tomasino because I think he had a great game, especially with that great pass to Alex Carrier for that goal. Um, but I, I didn't see a ton out of the other guys that played on that line tonight, Michael McCarron and Matt Luff, that I really uh, wanted to come on this show and brag about. So that's the first thing. The second thing, guys, gals, everybody, folks, passing, 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 passing. Passing is killing the Predators. And when I say killing the Predators, I mean that their passes are getting intercepted, their passes are getting broken up, their passes are, are just getting straight up stolen, taken down the ice and turned into goals for the opponent. That's got to stop. You can't do that against these types of teams that are headed for the playoffs or they will burn you every time. If that doesn't get cleaned up, you can't expect a very long run in the playoffs. Charlie, unfortunately, that's about all I have tonight. I'm going to go cough myself into oblivion. Signing off.
You can find him on Twitter at SCSOTF. You can check out his work on thefourcheck.com. He's got the intel that you need to know, and I sure do appreciate Sean jumping in the trenches with the Renegades of Puck. I also want to thank Stripe Digital Solutions for jumping in the trenches with Renegades Puck. You can find out more about Stripe Digital Solutions by going to stripedigitalsolutions.com or Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Stripe Digital Solutions helped me design the logo on the wall that you see right there. Help me design the T-shirt that I'm wearing right now. Also has helped me build renegadesofpuck.com and maintains that for me today and has helped me with my social media, my brand building, and just about everything else in the digital realm when it comes to running a small business and trying to get through, cut through, and fight through all of the different things that you need to do. You need a partner like Stripe Digital Solutions. That's why I encourage each and every one of you to reach out and talk to Brandy today. Believe me, you need the help. I needed the help. You need the help. Anybody trying to run a small business needs the help, and Stripe Digital Solutions can come through for you each and every time. Believe me, I've seen the results. I've experienced the results. And again, great people, great partners, and great work. I sure do appreciate Brandy over at Stripe Digital Solutions. This box score is easy as hell. No forward score to goal, and that, frankly, kind of pisses me off in a game that was up and down like it was against Tampa Bay. But the way Tampa Bay dogs the puck and the way they compete for every single thing, uh, it's not a surprise that none of these forwards were able to score a goal. Kerry and Yossi end up with your goals for the game. On the assist side of things, Duchesne, Forsberg, and Tomasino pick up an assist. Ekholm also picks up an assist. When it comes to shots on goal, it was Roman Yossi with five. That led the team. When it comes to block shots, I see Granlin has three in this game. That led the team. When it comes to hits, I see four on the scoreboard for Fabro and also four for Jano. But that's frankly not good enough. The National Purse should be delivering a lot more physical play against the Tampa Bay Lightning. The Tampa Bay Lightning were ready to engage from start to finish tonight on every single play. You had plenty of opportunities to play the body if you wanted to. Frankly, it's it's just disappointing. I'll cover that in the close before we head out of there. But first, I want to finish off the numbers. I'm going to finish off the metrics. I want to go over to the Renegade Analytics desk, and that's where Brian Baston comes in. You can find him on Twitter at Brian Baston. You can check out his work on the forecheck.com. He's got the charts you need to see and the numbers you need to know. He is the one and only Brian Baston. Welcome, Renegades, to the Renegade Analytics desk. I am Brian Baston, and I'll be here to talk to you about the Predators playoff magic number update, as well as one big stat for tonight. Unfortunately, as you all just witnessed, Nashville put up a pretty pathetic effort against the Tampa Bay Lightning, losing 6-2 to two in a game that Got close at times, but the Nashville Predators could never just close the gap against the Lightning, who were quick, efficient, and pretty much everything you want out of a playoff team as you come to the end of the regular season. Uh, that also means, unfortunately, with Vegas Idol and Nashville losing in regulation, Nashville did not make any progress on lowering their playoff pr uh, magic number, which remains at five, meaning, again, five points gained by the Predators um, or lost by the Vegas Golden Knights. In other news in the playoff race, Dallas defeated the Seattle Kraken 3-2, which pulls them even with the Nashville Predators at 93 points, but they do remain in the second wildcard spot as they have played one more game. Uh, unlike previous seasons where Nashville was chasing Dallas with uh, Dallas having games in hand, this time Nashville has the game advantage, and so hopefully they'll still be able to keep a step even if something like today happens. And unfortunately, the Predators don't have much time as they, ho they they come home and host the Minnesota Wild, a team that's very hot right now, even though they did defeat them earlier in the season, 6-2, uh, to two, early season, sorry, earlier in the month. Um, but with Vegas, they'll be, they'll be hosting the San Jose Sharks t tomorrow night, which San Jose is not a very good team. And so Nashville is going to have to take care of business on their end, just uh, if they hope to lower their playoff magic number and put some separation between themselves, the Dallas Stars, and the Vegas Golden Knights. Now, uh, let's move on to one big stat. As we saw tonight, Nashville has been playing some pretty uh, substandard hockey for what we, we consider to be average for this team. Um, they have been on a whirlwind tour of potential playoff opponents and playoff teams, um, as again with the Tampa Bay Lightning, the Calgary Flames, uh, the Minnesota Wild coming up tomorrow night, as well as the Calgary again on Tuesday. Um, within this month, however, the National Predators have some struggled. In games where they have allowed three or more goals, after tonight they move to 1-5-1 one, and one this month in, team, uh, in games against teams that have scored three or more points. Their only win coming against the Chicago Blackhawks, who are already eliminated. 
Four of their losses were against play, current playoff teams, and one of their single win was, um, sorry, one of their losses was, or, yeah, <laughs> one of their losses, pardon me, um, was against the, again, eliminated Buffalo Sabres. Nashville is not getting a lot of help with shooting. Their red-hot shooting sticks have been basically dormant, uh, not just for lines like the herd line, but, uh, the, the you know, the Forsbergs and the Duchesnes, they have been consistently scoring, but they, we haven't seen that on the hot streak that we have with the rest of the team as well. And so Nashville, going into the playoffs, almost limping into the playoffs with uh, goaltending, which can only, you know, UC Soros or David Ridge can only stand so much because this was uh, UC Soros' 66th game of the season, which is quite a bit of a workload. And if the, the players can't come back and score goals and help this team create offense, the Predators are going to have a very short trip to the playoffs. But there's not much time left. They've got more hockey to play. They've got four games remaining. They've got one tonight and or tomorrow night and on Tuesday. And Tuesday, if things go well, is the earliest that Nashville could actually clinch a playoff spot. Again, they could win two games and have Vegas lose at least one. There's several ways they can do that. But really what they need to do is take care of their own business and beat the Minnesota Wild tomorrow night. You can find him on Twitter at Brian Baston. You can check out his charts at on the forecheck.com and you can watch my hero Renegades of Puck TV. Sure to appreciate Brian running the Renegades analytics desk for me and for the Renegades of Puck. Now listen, let's go ahead and wrap this show up. It's a quick turnaround. The Nashville Predators are already on a plane coming back to Nashville and getting ready to take on the Minnesota Wild tomorrow at Bridgestone Arena. Listen, the Nashville Predators got what they deserve tonight. The Tampa Bay Lightning are a superior team in every single way to the Nashville Predators, and the Nashville Predators last year should have learned and been forged by fire from being in the same division as the Florida Panthers, the Tampa Bay Lightning, and the Carolina Hurricanes. But the Nashville Predators don't seem to be learning those lessons. They had that identity, they had that jam, and they really brought the pain for three quarters of a season, but three quarters of a season simply isn't good enough. And in the final stretch right here, the Nashville Predators are faltering in many ways. The key is the identity is not there. And that is something John Hines talked about to the point where I was so sick of hearing that word that I didn't think I could talk about it myself. But I haven't been hearing much of it as of late. And I haven't been hearing a lot about identity style wins for the Nashville Predators. They proved they could do it just the other night against the Calgary Flames. How, after a couple of days rest, did you come out and play the game you played tonight against the Tampa Bay Lightning? Were you ever going to win that game? Who knows? You were much more competitive in an open-air stadium here in Nashville a few weeks back than you were tonight. Frankly, I've not seen the Nashville Predators bringing nearly enough of the jam. If their identity is supposed to be physical, toughness, and making it difficult to play against... They're not achieving any of those three things right now. They still have a couple of games. They still control their own destiny to get this thing turned around. But I am telling you right now, the Nashville Predators will be a five-game rollover in the first round for the Calgary Flames if they bring the same level of effort that they brought tonight in Tampa Bay. Something much different needs to happen against Minnesota. Clinching a playoff spot could happen as soon as Tuesday. But the Nashville Predators need to take care of that business and then do a little bit of scoreboard watching until that game between the Preds and the Flames on Tuesday, where that will be taking place the same time as the Dallas Stars and the Vegas Golden Knights. That's going to wrap it up from the bunker. I'm your host and captain, Crazy Charlie Sonye. Stick taps love and respect to each and every one of you for being willing to jump in the trenches and coming and hanging out with me for a couple of minutes and getting the goods from the Renegades of Puck. For Mostradamus, for Sean C. Smith, for Brian Basson, for the ultimate one, for Kay Perk, and of course, for each and every one of the Renegades of Puck out there. I am your host and captain, Crazy Charlie Sonye. We'll be back in the bunker tomorrow, wrapping up the Minnesota Wild Game, talking all things Nashville, Predators, hockey, and playoff races. Stick taps. Love. Respect. Respect.